thing as we do it, but we always like to start on time. And Tracy Williams is one of our wonderful librarians. She's a teen librarian. Does she look like a teen? Doesn't she look adorable? <laughs> and we um, we're happy to learn a little bit about her experiences in Texas and and we're all actually going to do it, right? <laughs> so yes. Tracy, thank you very much. Okay, let me start sharing content. Share. Let's see what happens. Okay. Hopefully y'all can see the presentation now, right? Okay, can everybody see that? Claire? Hello? Yes, I okay. can. I, I just muted myself. Everybody mute okay. yourself. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, the Texas State Parks, um, well, back in the 1800s, uh, when the uh, United States started setting aside land for national parks, um, this wasn't actually happening in Texas because of the um, weird um, annexation um, conditions. Um, basically, in other parts of the country, um, the government, the US government had control over public lands, but um, as part of our annexation for the state of Texas, um, the state had control over our public lands. So um, national parks weren't happening in Texas, um, the state had to decide what to do with the public lands. Um, and our first um, start towards state parks was um, in 1907 when the Daughters of the Republic of Texas decided to, um, they persuaded the state to buy 300 acres of the San Jacinto battlefield um, and set aside money for improvements. Um, and then this was followed by um, a bunch of other different parks. Um, and then eventually, um, in 1923, Governor Pat Neff persuaded the Texas legislature to create an actual state parks board. Um, and they were less interested in conserving the scenery and more interested in creating campgrounds for Texans who loved to travel by auto, um, because that was the big boom of the automobile era. Um, and Travelers tended to camp out just on the side of the road, um, any spot they could find at the end of the day. But um, with auto travel increasing, it was, you know, not really the best option. Um, so uh, Governor Neff traveled um, all over the state of Texas um, and basically got 52 different tracts of land donated to the state. Um, to develop them into usable parks. Um, and Neff's family actually eventually donated their own 250 acres that became Mother Neff State Park. Um, and during the Great Depression, that is when our park system really took off um, when the Civilian Conservation Corps um, started doing all sorts of projects um, in the different state parks. Um, it was born in April 1933 and created roads and facilities in state and national parks. Um, let's see. Um, and then the Park Service, um, the locations that they chose were based on not only like the beauty of the nation of the area, um, but also being within ideal driving distance from a uh, major urban area. Um, exceptions being like Davis Mountains, Palo Duros, um, the ones that are like super beautiful, but like out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and National Park Service believed that the primary um, purpose of the park was to protect nature, whereas the State Park Board um, believed it was about recreation. And I think when you look at the different parks, you kind of get the feel that like, yeah, they do focus on recreation, but now I think they also work on conservation as well. Um, let's see. 
let's just go ahead and, and start talking about some of the different parks. Okay, so this is all of the different um, state parks in Texas currently. Um, obviously, I cannot talk about all of them, so I'm going to talk about the ones that I'm most familiar with, um, which is going to be this little map um, of the ones that I've been to at least once or twice. And we're going to start with San Jacinto Battleground and State Historic Site. Um, and I'm doing everything in order by distance. So starting with the closest one. So this is about an hour from Cyprus. Um, for, and here's like a map of the park. Um, and you can see, I don't know if my cursor is visible, but here in the middle is where the actual monument is. Um, and then also the battleship Texas is over here. Now I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, but, Coming and visiting the San, San Jacinto Battleground is completely free, um, but if you want to take a monument tour, it's 12 bucks um, or six bucks for children under 11. Um, and it commemorates the 18 minute long um, battle of 1836 for Texas independence from Mexico. Um, 1936 to 1939. And um, let me move on. Here's the elevator shaft um, dated from 1939. Um, the monument is um, Art Deco style and it houses the San Jacinto Museum of History, which has um, Mayan idols, Mexican manuscripts, um, Sam Houston's private dictionary, etc. Over 30,000 different artifacts um, are on a rotating display. Um, the, Grounds are around 1,200 acres, um, and they have different um, different places for you to like picnic and camp and what have you. Um, the oh, there's my kids from many years ago. Um, this is a view from the top, so they have an observation deck up at the top, and you can get wonderful views. Um, 360 degree view of the area around it. Um, and you can see the Battleship Texas. Um, the Battleship Texas, it launched in 1912 um, and then was commissioned the USS Texas in March 12, 1914. Um, it became the first battleship to mount anti aircraft guns. Um, it also, um, let's see, in 1918, um, Texas escorted the German fleet to its surrender anchorage during World War I. And then 1925, the Navy opted to modernize the Texas instead of scrapping her um, and converting her to fuel instead of coal. And um, then Texas became the flagship of the US Atlantic fleet, fleet during World War II. Um, and um, just as a coincidence, um, the USS Texas happened to be in Maine um, when Pearl Harbor was bombed, so that kind of saved her there. Um, and let's see, what else? When she completed her final mission, um, she returned to state of Texas and the state of Texas acquired her. Um, it, in 1948, it was decommissioned and became a memorial ship. And it is notable for being the first U.S. battleship to become a permanent museum, um, the first battleship to be declared a U.S. historic landmark, and the only remaining World War era dreadnought battleship. Um, and it is also only one of seven remaining ships to have served in both world wars. Um, you can't actually go see Battleship Texas right now because in um, 2018, they started having some catastrophic failures of the ship's hull and kept on getting flooded. And in August of 2019, the ship closed and they are working on moving it to dry dock and then will make repairs. And unfortunately, it's not going to go back to the San Jacinto Battleground site because there's not enough tourist traffic to actually um, pay for the upkeep of it. So right now the, um, the uh, 
Battleship Trust Fund is working on finding a new low, new home for Battleship Texas. Hopefully it'll stay in the Houston area. Um, and supposedly they plan on having it ready by 2022. Again. So there you go. Oh, when I go to the San Jacinto Battleground, what I like to do instead of taking the big bridge over here on um, here on 610 or on Beltway 8 is I like to take I-10 over here and get the uh, Lynchburg Ferry and take that one way. And then I like to come back over here in the Washburn Tunnel. And if you go through the Washburn Tunnel, um, before you actually go through, you can make a quick little stop over here. And that is the actual site of Santa Ana's surrender to um, in, in the actual battle um, of San Jacinto. So that's something cool you can go check out. Okay, a little further away, a little over an hour from Cyprus is Brazos Bend State Park. Um, it used to be a hunting ranch. And now it's about 5,000 acres of wetlands, prairies, and forests. Um, it has 3.2 miles of the Brazos River on it. And it was purchased in 1976 to 77 and opened in 1984. Um, there's 37 miles of trails. You can go camping, you can do bird watching, hiking. Um, mountain biking, fishing, picnicking, horseback riding. Um, what it's notable for, however, is the alligators. So there are over 300 adult alligators that live in the park. And um, in spring, you can hear their mating calls from at least half a mile away. Um, you can, and here's just, I don't know how well you can see in this picture, but there are at least one, two, three, four, five. I think there's at least five alligators in that picture right there. So lots of alligator watching and other wildlife. Um, there's great hiking there. The hiking trails are beautiful. Um, there's a big observation tower that you can go and visit um, and get like a 360 degree view of the park. Um, watch out for alligators. And lots of different um, birds for those who are interested in bird watching. And also in um, the Brazos Bend State Park is the George Observatory. Um, that's actually run by the um, Museum of Natural Science. Um, so it's like a separate thing, but um, it's there and it's open on Saturdays from 3 to 10 p.m. Um, and you can do observatory tours and check out the big telescope and stuff there. Um, next up is Galveston Island State Park, which is on a good day, an hour and 40 minutes from Cyprus. On a bad day, if you like leave on Friday afternoon, you're looking at two or more hours just because of traffic on the causeway. Um, Currently, right now, the uh, beach side of the park is closed, which is kind of sad, um, but they are trying to make improvements to the park um, from the 2008 Hurricane Ike damage. Um, so, let's see. Um, so it has a combination of like beaches and dunes on the beach side. And then on the other side of the highway, there's um, marsh and prairie land. And um, you can see that there's a, um, there's different lakes for you to go and canoe. You have to bring your own canoe or kayak. Um, there's camping options, there's free shelters. Um, alligators do live in the area, so you have to watch out for them. Um, and here's just some pictures. 
Um, one of the fun things that my family likes to do when we go to Galveston Island is go looking for ghost crabs. Um, so you, you have to do that at night. Um, and if you just wander around the beach at night with a flashlight and a um, net and you try and find the little ghost crabs coming out of their holes, they, um, they're they nocturnal. So they live in tunnels um, up to three or four feet under the ground um, during the day. And then they come out at night to feed. And you can actually buy those little net things that my kids are holding at the uh, park store. So. Lake Livingston State Park is about an hour and 45 minutes from Cyprus. Um, once again, on a good day, unless 45 has a big pile up on it. Um, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department opened it in 1977, and it's about 635 acres. Um, it's on one of the largest reservoirs in the state, um, and it's an impoundment of the Trinity River and provides water for the city of Houston and other East Texas cities. Um, East Texas cities, it's people who go there, they um, go there mainly for the boating and um, and fishing because of the size of the lake as well as the level. Um, there's lots of great camping. Um, there are alligators here too. Um, let's see, you can catch catfish, crappy bass, um, or perch. They have three boat ramps, um, some fish cleaning stations, a fishing pier, and some bank fishing. And they also loan um, fishing poles as part of the Taco Boner program. Um, you just have to check with the park store. And um, in all of the Texas state parks that have fishing, um, it, you do not need a fishing license. So anywhere outside of a Texas state park, you need to have a fishing license to fish, but not within Texas state parks. Um, you can also rent canoes and, um, and paddle boards and kayaks at the park store. Um, there's fishing, there's four miles of hiking trails, so not a ton of hiking there. Um, of note, multiple pairs of bald, bald eagles actually nest around Lake Livingston, so you might see them from time to time during the fall and winter months. And of course, my favorite camping activity is to make s'mores. And there we are, working on our s'mores. Okay, moving further out, we have Bisher State Park. Um, and Bisher and Bastrop State Parks are both within the Lost Pines area, um, just outside of Austin. And um, Bisher State Park is named for Amal and Elizabeth Fisher. They donated 318 acres of land to the state in 1936. Um, and then Later, the state purchased some more park land um, in 1976 to 77. Oh wait, that's the wrong one. Uh, later, somebody donated, um, another family member donated 318 more acres. Um, and then the state acquired the rest of, this, of the park's land from the city of Smithville. Um, the original park was 1,700 acres and opened in 1940, but the late the state later gave um, 700 acres to MD Anderson and the UT Cancer Center. Um, so right now it's around a thousand acres. Um, and uh, the CCC made all of the original park improvements. Um, and I totally love any park that has um, CCC structures just because of um, how beautiful they are. They usually were made in a kind of follow the National Park Service style where they're like low hung buildings made with natural materials that they find on site um, and all made by hand. It's, it's amazing the um, craftsmanship that you'll find in the different CCC structures. Um, you can hike six miles of trails and most of the trails are also open for biking. Um, you'll notice in the middle there is Fisher State Park Lake. You can um, fish or paddle um, around the lake. They do have um, paddle, they do have boat and canoe rentals, so you can also rent a boat. Um, you can, let's see, 
They have lots of great campsites, um, as well as some screen shelters and cabins. Um, anytime you wanna stay at a cabin at one of the state parks, you pretty much have to make a reservation as soon as the reservation system opens for that date because cabins go fast. And I think it's six months out that you can reserve. I could be wrong, might be a year. Um, it's been a while since I've actually made a reservation because, you know, coronavirus. Um, so, and, and with that in mind, most of the state parks now, you actually need a, a pass to even get in. Normally, you can just show up at a state park, pay the day use fee, and go in. But because they're limiting capacity at all the state parks um, due to COVID, you have to actually get a day pass in advance to just come in and visit. Um, out about that by one of my friends who was trying to go visit Inks Lake and um, couldn't because they didn't get a day pass and day passes were like three weeks out um, as far as bookings go. Let's see. And so here's the beautiful lake there. And um, we visited Bastrop State or Bastrop and Bisher in the fall, like around Thanksgiving. Um, and so you can see like you get a little bit of leaves changing. There's a great playground there. Um, this is one of their cabins that they have available to rent. And this is one of their CCC structures. Mm -hmm. And um, Bastrop and Fisher State Park are about 12 miles away from each other. And you can drive um, Park Road 1C in between the two instead of going around the outside. And it's this beautiful road that's like tree lined and gorgeous. And um, it's super narrow. So be aware of that and twisty and windy. And um, let's see, also the speed limit is only 30. So you just kind of slowly meander and cruise down the road until you get to Bastrop State Park, um, which Bastrop State Park is about an hour and 50 minutes from Cyprus. Um, there is conveniently a Bucky's right outside the state park. So um, if you forget something, you can just run to Bucky's and get just about anything you want, including beaver nuggets. Not for sure. <laughs> um, so um, Bastrop and Bisher are both within 75,000 acres of the Loblolly Pines known as the Lost Pines ecosystem. Um, it is the westernmost stand of Loblolly Pines in the United States. Um, and they're actually, it's kind of odd because they're separated by about 100 miles from the nearest um, Loblolly Pine section, um, ecosystem over in East Texas. So it's just this weird stand of Loblolly Pines um, that have grown in the area for over 18,000 years. Um, and it's part of the sandy and gravelly soils that um, help create an environment where these pines can grow. Um, but these pines have actually become genetically unique and have adapted to um, live in 30% less rainfall than the um, eastern Loblolly pine. Um, the state acquired the land for the park in um, 1933 to 1935, and the park opened in 1937, and it's now around 6,000 acres long, um, or big. And once again, this, um, this particular park, park was has a lot of um, CCC structures. So this is a structure that's within one of the campgrounds that we stayed at. Um, just has like picnic tables. It has a stone fireplace that was used at one point in time. Um, and here is another CCC structure. Um, in 2011, y'all may recall that um, there were wildfires that went through um, Bastrop and Bisher State Park. Um, firefighters managed to save all of the CCC structures. Um, however, lots of damage occurred and lots of pines were lost. Um, this is like the hilly section behind one of our campsites. And this is our campsite. We actually spent Thanksgiving at Bastrop State Park that year. So that was super fun. Um, and here's us hiking through a section where the wildfire had actually gone through. And so you can see there's like no foliage on the trees. Um, there's no foliage on the ground. 
Um, the trees are all burned up a little bit. Um, have the burn marks on the bark. And then, so we visited in 2012. This picture I snagged from the Texas Parks and Wildlife um, website. And this is now what some of the forest looks like after the fire. So you can tell like nature just took over and has created this beautiful lush forest again. So it's amazing to kind of see what happens when um, nature destroys and then renews in a particular area. Um, let's see, oh, let me go back and look at the park map. Um, so once upon a time, there was a lake in Bastrop State Park. However, um, in 2015, during the uh, Memorial Day flood, floods that happened in Texas, the dam on the lake failed. And so all the water in the lake surged down Copperas Creek to the Colorado River. So um, yeah, no more lake, but you can stay at a campsite or historic cabin. Um, you can hike seven miles of trail. They do have a swimming pool, um, so you can go swimming. Um, oh, and there's the make the lake that doesn't exist anymore. So that lake right there is no more. Um, you used to be able to fish there, but you can't do that anymore. Okay, the kitty falls around two hours and 20 minutes from Cyprus. Um, it is like right on the cusp of the city of Austin, so right outside Austin. Um, it is a super cool place to visit. Um, it, in the historical perspective, um, Thomas McKinney purchased the property along around 1850, um, and it's along Onion Creek. Um, and he actually was a senator, senator of the first legislature in Austin. Um, and so while he was a senator, he made plans for his new home in Onion Creek and built it between 1850 and 1852. He made a limestone home, a grist mill, and made a dam on his ranch. Um, but he died in serious debt. So after his death, his widow sold the property to the Smith family. They owned it for a while, and then they finally donated it to the state of Texas in 1973. And then it was opened as a park in 1976. And you can, eventually I'll get to pictures where you can see their um, homestead. They have 81 campsites, all with a water and electric hookups. Um, they also have some fairly newly remodeled cabins. Um, one of my favorite places to go when we're there is this rock outcropping. Um, our um, ancient settlers, the Native Americans, they actually use these route um, outcroppings as shelters. And when the park first opened, um, the parks board, they found lots of artifacts and, and that sort of thing from the actual settlers who had um, stayed under these outcroppings. Now it's just a great shady place to get out of the sun with a nice little seating area too. And it's right along Onion Creek right there. And then here are some of the falls that come along the um, limestone outcroppings. Mm. And super fun to go swimming and just do some hiking. The kids love climbing on all the different rocks. Um, I look away because I freak out that they're going to fall and hurt themselves. Um, there's places where you can jump in. Mm. And then there's gorgeous hiking trails too. Um, blue bonnets, and there's us hiking along one of the trails. Um, one thing to note, if you do camp there, what I found kind of irritating is because it is so close to the city of Austin, um, there's like um, different nightclubs nearby. And so like I could hear nightclub music until like midnight from my campsite. And I'm a light sleeper. So I was like, do you guys please go to bed? So it is a little close to uh, civilization. And here's a picture of one of the um, McKinney, or part of the McKinney homestead. OK. So 
So we have Pertinalis or Pedernalis, depending upon how you want to pronounce it, Ball State Park. Um, it is near Johnson City and it's around three hours from Cyprus. Um, it was acquired from private owners in 1970 and opened in 1971. It's around 5,000 acres, and it's along the banks of the Pertinalis River. Let's see, it's in, um, it's near Johnson City, so, you know, while you're there, you might as well go visit the LBJ Ranch and check out um, LBJ's, LB, uh, LBJ's home. Um, Let's see, it used to be the Circle Bar Ranch, um, and it's got typical Edwards Plateau terrain, lots of limestone cliffs and um, hilly areas. Um, one thing to note is that when it rains, the um, water in the river can go from a gentle stream to a torrent in no time at all. So you do have to kind of keep your eye out for um, whether or not it's getting too rainy. Um, but this is kind of what it looks like. Um, you can camp there. They have water and electricity sites. Um, they also have primitive campsites if you want to just go camp out in the middle of nowhere. Um, they have hiking and biking. The trails range from challenging um, to, well, easy to challenging. Um, let's see, you can tube hike or canoe tube hike. You can tube, canoe, or kayak in the water. Um, and let's see, you can also ride your horse there if you bring your own horse. They don't provide horses for you. Um, so the water there is just beautiful. And we've been to Pedernales twice. We've camped there once. And then the first time we went there, which is when these pictures are from, we actually stayed in Austin. and. We just made a loop of different state parks and just visited a different one every day um, because there are several right around Austin that um, you can get to within like 40 minutes or so. And lots of rocks to climb around on. My son was obviously tired and grumpy there. Mom, why are you taking more pictures of me? Little caves to take a look at. So it's just a really fun place to go exploring. Um, and this is the waterfall in the um, Twin Falls Nature Trail. Um, it's only a half mile to get to it. Okay, so Longhorn Cavern State Park is um, also kind of in that same area. It's in Burnett, Texas, around three hours and 15 minutes from Cyprus. Um, it is a 645 acre state park. Um, it was acquired from private owners in 1932 to 1937. And in 1934, the CCC began working on it. Um, it's, it's a smallish park. Um, so you can see there's there's not a whole lot of walking trails and, and that sort of thing, because the main draw there is to go to the cavern. Um, and this is like CCC structures there are just gorgeous. This is the visitor center um, and, and it's just beautiful inside and out. Um, and they also have like really great stuff there at the uh, at the gift shop. That's where I got the earrings that I'm wearing today. Um, this is the new entrance to the cabin, um, the cavern, the one that the CCC built. They moved um, two and a half tons of silt debris and bat guano out of the cavern and um, built this lovely staircase to get in um, through a different entrance, not the original entrance that was used. Um, and so here is at the bottom of the staircase where you sit and wait before you go in for the um, cave tour. Um, they do offer cave tours and it's about 1.1 miles round trip. Um, you'll be, it's about an hour and a half long. Um, 
you may have to, well, actually, you'll, unless you're super short, you'll definitely have to do some ducking and some shimmying sideways because um, some of the lowest points are around four foot four inches. Um, and there's also a brief lights out demonstration just to show you how dark it really is in there. So if you get freaked out by the dark, go. Um, cave tours are around 18 for adults and 14 for kids ages 4 to 11. Um, unlike, unlike most Texas state parks, it's free to actually come to the grounds to the Longhorn Cavern State Park and, and go hiking and whatever. Um, so you don't have to pay an entrance fee, um, but you do have to pay for the cave tour. And they also offer a wild cave tour for $65 where you go and visit other parts of the cave that you can't see on the normal walking tour and you have to you know, wear protective gear and um, super strenuous and that sort of thing. Um, definitely not my cup of tea because I'm a little claustrophobic. And here's a little bit about the uh, park. And I had to steal a lot of pictures from the Texas Parks and Wildlife website because um, pictures that you take on your own just aren't really that good. It's really hard to get a good picture. But this is actually a picture of the original entrance to the cavern. Um, the cavern has been known to settlers for quite a while. And actually in the 1920s, it served as a speakeasy. Um, so they had lots of dance parties and stuff in there. Um, and the original entrance was this pole up in the top. And um, you had to basically rope down into the cavern. Um, and so the CCC actually created a secondary entrance where you can actually just go down some steps and walk straight in. And um, should you decide, I, I didn't actually cover Inks Lake, um, but Inks Lake is like right next door to Longhorn Cavern. So you might as well go there as well. Um, it's also a beautiful state park. Um, and there's a big lake, you can go swimming, you can do boating, you can go fishing. Um, it's huge, so it's great for hiking and stuff. Okay. Um, Tyler State Park. Um, this one is beautiful to go visit in the fall, which is when we went there, um, because you do get a little changing of the leaves. Um, the best place to visit in the fall, however, is Lost Maples, um, which is in the out beyond San Antonio. Um, but you, you really have to book that way out in advance uh, because it gets super popular that the year. Um, but Tyler State Park is almost four hours from Cyprus. It was built between 1935 and 1941 by the CCC. Um, they built the roads and buildings, planted trees. Um, they made dams to control erosion. Um, they made a dam to create the lake that is there. Um, and this particular state park um, actually, because it was built later in the CCC era, instead of having that national park kind of rugged, um, rustic style that those particular ones have, it um, is a little more on I think it's one of the pictures of the, oh man, my picture isn't there. Phooey. Okay, I put in a picture of the, um, let's see, it, it follows more of the Frank Lloyd Wright style. It is like kind of that, that low slung ranch style, um, clean lines, that sort of thing. Um, unfortunately, my picture disappeared. So, but you'll find that when you go there. So it's not gonna have that rustic CCC look. It's going to have um, a bit of a more modern look there. Um, there are 13 miles of trails and it's a beautiful wooded um, scenery that you'll find there. Um, you can fish in the lake for crappy perch, catfish or bass. There's three fishing piers um, and a boat ramp. They loan out fishing rods. Um, as well as reels and tackle boxes. Um, and once again, you don't need a fishing license. Um, you can rent a boat or you can bring your own. So we rented a boat and that was super fun. Um, 
They have campsites that range from water only to full hookups. They have cabins, screen shelters. Um, and I have a picture of this little guy because the raccoons are really smart there. So we had a campsite that was kind of on the edge of the woods and we had like one raccoon that was like hanging over out over on like the left side of our campsite and we were keeping our eye on him and in the meantime like some other raccoons had like circled around behind our tent and was coming around the other way to try and check out what we were eating um so they, they were smart little suckers <laughs> And there's our campsite, um, super beautiful. Really loved it there. Um, Dinosaur Valley State Park. Oh gosh, I need to go faster. Um, Dinosaur Valley State Park. Um, we had Native Americans who lived at sites in the park about 6,000 years ago until Europeans arrived. Um, and they were probably ancestors of the Tonkawa. Um, and once the Europeans arrived, they <laughs> took off, um, and nobody really noticed the dinosaur tracks until 1908, when a huge flood roared down the Paluxy River and washed out all the bridges and culverts, and actually scoured the, uh, riverbed, and then at that point, um, a nine-year-old kid just happened to discover, um, large three-toed tracks in the river. And so years later, a fossil collector comes and, and sees one of the theropod tracks um, for sale in a shop in New Mexico. And he comes to Texas to check it out. And while exploring it, he found um, sauropod tracks along with theropod tracks. And um, anyway, they, they found that there were like, there was way more tracks than they ever imagined um, were actually there. So the fun thing to do is to actually go and check out the uh, dinosaur tracks, as well as the dinosaur models, which um, were going to the uh, state park. Um, they were actually models on display at the 1964-65 New York World's Fair, um, and now they're here. Um, dinosaur tracks are kind of hard to see. You basically have to walk along the river, because like, unless the water is really low, um, all of the dinosaur tracks are covered. Um, and so you just have to like wade along the river and then you'll find dinosaur tracks. Um, we, we enjoyed our time there. However, I will say it's super popular. And um, because it's so close to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, it, it was like super crowded as well. Like finding a parking space was really hard. Um, so, uh, you might want to plan on if you want to visit, um, come early in the day or plan on camping so that you can actually um, have a place to park and visit everything. Um, Monaghan Sandhills. Um, we visited Monaghan Sandhills actually on our way back from um, a trip to New Mexico. Um, it's like way out in the middle of nowhere out by Midland, Odessa, um, eight hours from Cyprus. And it's it's a fairly small park and there's not a lot to see other than the sand hills. So, you know, that's the only reason why we would have seen it was because we were like on our way back from someplace else. We'd actually gone to see Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico and um, came back through and made a little detour so we could check out Monaghan's. Um, but it's over 4,000 or almost 4,000 acres of sand dunes. Um, and it opened in 1957. And it's only a small portion of a dune field that actually um, extends like it's like 200 miles um, wide um, from Monaghan's into New Mexico. Um, plants stabilize most of the dunes, but um, the dunes in the park are still active, so they'll move from time to time. Um, there's no marked trails, so you just wander around. Um, there's all sorts of different creatures and wild um, wildlife. Um, this is what the campsites look like. So it's very sparse looking because it's sand dunes. Um, you can rent these um, sledding discs from the park gift shop. And apparently, I think if they say that the purple ones go faster, I can't remember. Supposedly there's a color that goes faster. Um, 
But the thing to do is to rent one of the um, discs and go sliding down the sand dunes. Um, it's super windy there, so it's fun to fly a kite. Um, and it's just huge and vast. Like, it's just unbelievably big and like just so weird to see these sand dunes out in the middle of nowhere. Um, Cat Rock Canyon State Park. That is um, a little over eight hours from Cyprus. Um, it's near Kitake, Texas. And um, let's see, the state purchased the land in 1975 and it opened as a state park in 1982. Um, when we visited a couple of years ago, they had just rented, rebuilt the uh, visitor center and the visitor center was gorgeous. Um, park has around 15,000 acres. Um, and it includes a 1200 acre trailway, which is where they um, turned a railroad into a hiking biking trail. Um, it has over 90 miles of trails um, for hiking and biking. Um, links range from one mile to 15 miles, except for the actual railway, which is like over 60 miles. Um, they do allow horses on some of their trails. Um, and they have camping and they do have swimming and fishing and um, boating. Um, this place is just gorgeous. Um, you see the lovely red rock formations here. And it's just huge. They have this awesome little prairie dog town. So you like drive through this one section and it's just like prairie dogs everywhere. They're so fun to watch. And um, it's home to the uh, Texas State Bison Herd. And um, this actual herd was established by um, Cattleman Charles Knight and his wife in 1878. Um, and this is one of the few herds that actually saved the bison from extinction. Um, you'll also find gray fox, raccoon, jackrabbits, um, snakes, lizards, um, including prairie rattlesnakes, um, and then all kinds of different birds, roadrunners, red-tailed hawks, etc. We got mama bison and baby bison. And then this is actually the, the trailway. So this is where they, um, this was a railroad built in the 1920s. Um, and it provide passenger service to Lubbock. Um, and it was used until 1989. And then in 1993, it was converted into um, a 64 mile trailway that goes through three counties, crosses 46 bridges, um, and goes through Clarity Tunnel, which is one of the last active railroad tunnels in Texas. And you'll see a colony of Mexican free-tailed bats in the uh, Clarity Tunnel. Okay, if you go to Caprock Canyon, you might as well go ahead and go visit Paladuro um, because they're very close to each other. Um, Paladuro is about nine hours away from Cyprus. Um, it is the second largest canyon system in the United States. So Grand Canyon beats it. Um, it's 120 miles long, 20 miles wide, and 800 feet deep. And um, here's our park map. Um, you can see beautiful colors in the different geologic layers. Um, it started forming over a million years ago, um, but the uh, walls of the canyon, um, the openings itself, like the, the sediment that you can see in the walls, um, show you a much older geologic history of about 250 million years. Um, the Texas State Longhorn Herd lives at the park, and you'll find them near the uh, um, park headquarters. Um, the state bought the land for the park in 1933 and the CCC worked on it. Um, they, they actually built the, uh, the road down, down to the canyon floor and until it was finished they hiked in and out the canyon um, every day go down and do the work. I just can't even imagine that. 
Um, the park actually opened in um, 1934 before it was complete. And it's the second largest park in the system today with over 28,000 acres. Um, you can hike, you can mountain bike, um, you can go by horse or car to view the park. There's like 30 miles of hiking. Um, they have geocaching and stuff. And then some of you may know about the uh, musical Texas. Um, so the Texas Outdoor Musical runs Tuesdays through Sundays in the summer in the Pioneer Amphitheater. And it's a um, story of the uh, struggles of the earliest settlers of Texas. Um, has singing, dancing, fireworks, Texas humor, all that kind of good stuff. Um, my parents, when they lived in Amarillo, that was the big thing to take visitors to, was to go take friends from out of town to see the musical. Um, when we visited Palo Duro, we visited on the wrong days, so we didn't actually get to go see the musical. Um, this is a cool little cave that we found there, and this is just kind of a big panoramic view. Um, a little creek that runs through. Um, this is a cowboy dugout along one of the trails. So, okay, last state park on my trip. Um, Davis Mountain State Park. And that is uh, almost nine hours from Cyprus, um, way over in far west Texas. Um, let's see, the US Secretary of War, Jefferson Davis, um, ordered the construction of the Fort Davis Army Post after, um, to basically protect the settlers in that area. Um, the Fort Davis was active from 1854 to 1891, um, except for certain periods during the Civil War. Um, and the, if you go to Davis Mountain State Park, you might as well go to um, Davis Mountains um, National Historic Site, which opened in 1961. Um, and the National Park Service has restored and preserved the fort. Um, let's see, Davis Mountains wasn't, Davis Mountain State Park wasn't established until 1933 when um, some local landowners who were devastated by the Great Depression donated some of their land to the state. Um, and the CCC built most of the parks. Um, it was actually one of the earliest projects for the Texas CCC. Um, and among the things that they built was the Indian Lodge, which is a 16 room full service hotel. Um, and they even built the original furnishings within the lodge. Um, and let's see, there's also a beautiful scenic drive that they built um, and a look shelter. And here's our map. Um, okay, I needed to rearrange my pictures here. Um, also, if you visit Davis Mountain State Park, you might as well also go to the McDonald's Observatory, um, which is right over here. Um, and you will be able to check out um, multiple telescopes there. Um, and they have night telescope parties where you can, um, they set up little telescopes that view different parts of the galaxy and you can go at night and check out the different telescopes. Um, it's, it's super fun to visit that. So there's the observatory. Um, here is Fort Davis. So some of the ruins that you can see there. And then this is actually within Davis Mountain State Park. So this is one of the um, overlook structures um, and just a view of the mountains. Um, picnic table that was built under this gorgeous big tree. Stone fireplace. Ah, okay. All right, and um, let's see. I think that's it. Is that an observatory? This is not the observatory. This is this is actually, I think it's like a um, water tower, or a former water tower sort of thing. I'm not sure exactly what it was. But <laughs> it was super cool and pretty, so I took a picture. <laughs> that's neat. 
Yeah, so um, yeah, those are some of the 90-something state parks in Texas. Obviously, there are way, way more um, that you can see and visit. Um, any questions, comments? I don't know. Do you have a favorite? Do I have a favorite? Oh my gosh. Um, that's really hard to say. I don't. What's your favorite thing to do? You like to fish or hike or moors? We, <laughs> we are mostly, I mean, I like, I like hiking. Um, canoeing is fun. We're, we're not into fishing because then, you know, you have to like, Get the fish off the hook and <laughs> put the bait on the hook. I don't do that. Um, as far as favorite state park, it's really hard to decide. Like, um, you know, I used to say that, like Bastrop was my favorite, and then I visited Tyler, and I was like, oh, I love Tyler. But then I visited like Capra Canyon, and I'm like, oh, I really love this place. So, you know, it's really hard to pick, and the and the state is, I mean state is huge so you can tell from just all the different parks like there's, there's a different state park for anyone you know if you like being by the ocean go to Galveston if you you know want some rugged beauty go and visit um, Davis Mountains or Palo Duro so um, yeah lots of great different places to visit um, some of the places on my wish list to visit would be Garner State Park um, I've heard amazing things about it. Um, however, it's another one of those state parks that's hard to get into because it's so popular. Um, Lost Maples during the fall um, is on my wish list. Um, but once again, another really hard to get into place. Um, Enchanted Rock, which is this huge um, granite dome outside of Austin, or actually outside of Fredericksburg. Um, and that once again is hard to get into. You have to purchase passes in advance. Um, yeah, you know, there's so many places I want to go visit. Oh, and um, Caddo Lake, which is out in East Texas, and um, it's kind of got that Louisiana swampy thing with cypress trees and um, the big gnarly roots coming out of the water and that kind of thing. So, so many different places I want to go. Oh, wow. This is a really neat inside view. Thank you so much, Tracy. You're welcome. Makes me want to try to do camping and stuff. <laughs> yes, I'm excited for the 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 video because my brother, my son-in-law likes to do this, and I so he'll maybe watch this and see what his next thing will be. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to mention. Um, I saw on the website for Palo Duro Canyon that they recently added in glamping campsite. Ooh. Yeah, so glamping is yeah, so glamping is when you go camping, but somebody provides all of the items for you and it's kind of luxury camping. So you're in a tent, but you're in a really nice bed in a tent. <laughs> That's my <laughs> style. <Yes. laughs> Kathy <Yeah>. agrees. <laughs> exactly. Wow, so great. Thank you so much, Tracy. I just want to remind everybody next week we have Professor Steve Davis, rock and roll historian, is, is going to do a little different. He's going to talk about JFK and give us the, the scoops on the assassination. So um, don't miss that. It's going to be really interesting. And um, thank you for coming, everybody. And Rachel, that Rachel's going to be our new life cop. Thank you, Rachel. And um, We'll see you next week. And Tracy, as usual, you just have a wonderful, love your pictures. Sam and Georgia are great, beautiful models. And thanks again. Oh, you're welcome. It was fun. Okay, everybody. And I'll let Tracy take us out and we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody.